It's time now for Jesus is the Answer with Pastor Peter, coming to you from the International Christian Fellowship in Northeast Philadelphia. International Christian Fellowship is a Bible-believing church that preaches the uncompromised Word of God and prays for you and your needs. Pastor Peter is bringing the message of salvation, healing, and deliverance throughout the world. Now, here is Pastor Peter. Hello, praise the Lord, and welcome to Jesus is the Answer. This is Pastor Peter. I'm going to pray for you and your needs. And I believe that our God is going to supply all our needs according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. The number is on your screen. Please call and you'll be glad that you call. Someone will help you with your questions or with your prayers. Today we are going to talk about the revenge or the wrath of God. If you remember Revelation chapter 6 verses 9 to 11. There are souls under the altar and they were asking revenge and God says you have to wait until the, all the numbers is fulfilled. We don't know the number. God is not going to tell us the number. Only God knows. But he said wait and I will take the revenge for you. So those souls are waiting for the revenge. Now these are the Old Testament people and their blood is crying for revenge. As you know, when Abel killed his brother, his blood was crying out for revenge. But in the New Testament, Jesus Christ taught us to forgive one another. And he said once, you should forgive your brothers seven times seventy. And book of Romans chapter 12 Verses 19 to 21, if you read, St. Paul says, if your enemy hungry, feed him. If he thirsty, give him something to drink. Doing so, you will be putting the coals of fire on his head. And some people say, what does it mean? Putting the coals of fire will burn that man. But this is the tradition in the old time when they used to travel in the winter time they used to keep some kind of container on their head and put the uh, coals of fire to keep them warm. So he is saying when you do something good to them, they will feel warm in their heart and they will feel good in their heart. It's not for burning, but it's making them comfortable. So he says you should not be overcoming evil by uh, evil, but evil with good. And so that's the teaching of the Word of God. And the Word of God says, revenge is mine. So in the New Testament, we don't take revenge. We leave it to the Lord. And so here, God promised He is going to take revenge of the people who kill them or persecute them. And so we see in the Great Tribulation, they will be great number of people will be dying for the truth and dying for Christ and the fulfilling the law. And so we learned a little bit last time Revelation chapter 7 and Revelation chapter 15. All these people coming from the great tribulation and the angel asks John do you know where these people came from? And John said, I don't know. And the angel explained to him that these people came from the great tribulation. So that means the number is already fulfilled. And now there, there will be no more people will be there for Antichrist to kill or destroy. The word of God says in the book of Revelation chapter 12, verse 11, they overcome the devil and his enemy by the word of their testimony and the blood of Jesus Christ. So they were pleading the blood of Jesus Christ and God gave them the victory and the word of God says they were not afraid to give their life for Christ. So, so point I'm making, all those people's number might be fulfilled. So what happened, this is in future, 
but in the book of Revelation is written like it already happened. So what happens now the Antichrist will not have anyone to pick on or kill or anything like that because most of the people left. Now some of the people are still remaining. Those are the people we already, already learned that those people, 144,000 Jewish people were sealed and the devil had no authority over them. God strictly told them not to kill or not to do any harm to these people and we learned that God said go to safety and um, stay there until the wrath of God is over three and a half years and so they are in safety devil cannot touch them if you remember in in Egypt when the ten plague came all Israeli people were safe the same way God is going to do Israeli people will be safe as the tribulation going on so what happens now when all these martyrs number is almost fulfilled now the devil has nobody to harass or do anything so what happens they are going to destroy themselves and as I said from the earlier all this tribulation seven years of tribulation is the wrath of God poured on the enemy first three and a half years started from the Revelation chapter 6 to Revelation chapter 11 that's what that was three and a half years when the two witnesses were witnessing and the wrath of God was poured and that time also but there was no one was able to kill any of the martyrs because we learned they came after the great tribulation and so now the great tribulation almost going to be over and there is nobody to be killed so God take the advantage of this and pours the wrath of God in the Revelation chapter 16 if you start reading from verse 1 to verse 21 that whole chapter talks about the wrath of God and the bowls were poured on the people but if you read Revelation chapter 16 who are those people it says who took the name the number and worship the beast or dragon or worship the image those are the people will have problem and those are the people will be harassed or killed by this wrath of God Revelation chapter 16 verse 2 the first bowl was poured on earth and when the bowl was poured on earth many people had so much problem and uh, people start having so much pain and suffering and who are those people as I already told you those people are the people who took the mark of the beast and those are the people who were harassed they never repent they never ask God forgiveness they never say anything good but the more pro problem keep on coming from heaven the bowls were poured and they start doing more sinful activities. The, the second bowl we read was uh, put it on the a sea. That is in Revelation chapter 16 verse 3. Now when this bowl was poured on the sea, what happened? All the sea creatures, they died. Now you know there are so many sea creatures in the sea water is three part and the land is one part so you know many more creature creatures are in water now big whales today some of the governments are not allowing to kill for even the Japanese people food and some other uh, 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 creatures like a shark and some other other sea creatures but when this bowl will be poured on the sea, what's going to happen? Each and every sea creatures will be killed. Not only that, they will be blood all over the sea. Wherever the sea is in the world, they will be blood. And that blood, it says, that blood smell will be like a dead man's blood. 
and you know if you would have seen dead people uh, lying there for more than a week or so, you see how horrible a uh, smell comes. So that's the kind of smell will be coming. And so the earth had a problem. Now the sea had a problem. Now the third bowl was poured on the rivers and the spring water. That is in Revelation chapter 16, verse 4. Now just think. Now the water, the river, wa river water is a drinking water. The spring water is a drinking water. And today we have advanced technology. People can purify water and they can drink. But in every spring and every river's water is became bloody, they will have problem. And so this problem is coming to the people who deny Christ, took the mark, or worship the beast. Now, we see the fourth one is coming on the sun, and that is in Revelation 16, verse 8. Now, this bowl is poured on the sun. Everything is poured from heaven. Now, when the sun is already hot in the summertime, when our temperature goes like a hundred and 105 degrees people start cursing God and saying why this is happening but this time when this bowl will be poured on the Sun the Sun became like a fire and the people will be scorching like a fire and if you know if somebody burn in the fire how much their skin burns and how much pain they have when this thing start happening the people will be crying out, shouting, using foul language, cursing God, cursing God's creation, but they will never repent and they will not ask forgiveness. Sometimes people will be thinking, if these people ask forgiveness, will they get the forgiveness? No. Why? Because once you take the, the number or the beast, a beast mark on your forehead or on your hand then you cannot repent you are already doomed for eternity and so what happens all these people who are cursing and shouting and grumbling not repenting because they do not have the heart of repentance anymore because when once people start committing sin they have calluses and they cannot repent just like a devil devil committed sin but devil never repented and he is he will never repent because he is already doomed to go to hell and we will be learning that later on so here we see now up to now we saw four bowls were poor now the fifth bowl is poured on the throne of Antichrist and that is written in chapter 16 verse 10 so now just think that King Antichrist is ruling he was thinking he is doing great no enemy nobody is doing any harm to him but when the bowl was poured on his throne you can imagine the problem what the problem was the darkness came on his throne as well as around the throne around the world as I said earlier Jewish people who were kept for three and a half years for safety they will have sunshine they will not have any problem but the people who took the mark of the beast or worship the beast or worship the image of the beast those are the people who will have problem now Many people have problems finding out the where will be the throne of the Antichrist. I believe his throne will be in the Rome. So now his throne is darkness and everywhere his kingdom is there is a darkness. And if you remember, if there was a thick darkness in Egypt, and the word of God says people were not able to move. Just think in the middle of the day. People are traveling. And people are doing regular chores. 
and all of a sudden the light shuts off. Car doesn't give light, the battery runs out, the electric doesn't work and everything doesn't work and completely darkness. What will happen? People will be bumping to each other, people will be dying, people working in the factory, they will be cutting themselves and so much disaster will come. And so this was a problem for Antichrist, his kingdom and his, his followers. Now the sixth bowl will be poured on the Euphrates river. Now this Euphrates river is a very great river for these Muslim people. And the word of God says as soon as the bowl will be poured, the water will be dried out. So water will dry up, then what the word of God says, God is preparing the way for the enemies, the kings from the east. Now many people have many um, theory on that. They can say Chinese coming from the east. And now Indians also have a great army. They can come in from the east and join with Antichrist. So just like God is preparing the way because God the one poured the, this um, sixth bowl on this river. And so what happens? The river, river will be dry and there will be road for enemies to come. Not only that we see uh, when, the, when, the, when the sixth bowl is poured on the river the same time Three evil spirit, three demonic spirit comes out of the mouth of the dragon that is called the old serpent or the devil and antichrist, the, the beast who came out of the sea, he will be having that uh, evil spirit coming out of his mouth and the third one called the false prophet, he is also called beast came from the earth. So all these three evil trinity will have the evil speaking tongue, like a frog. You know frogs when they make noise is not a pleasant noise. Even that today some people say you can kiss the frog and this and that. But I'm just saying it's not a good thing to hear their noise. So point I'm making these three evil spirit will go and gather the people around the world. Now let's go because the Euphrates River is uh, dried up and now there is a way to go and fight the enemy. And this is what they will be planning. The seventh bowl will be poured on the air. And that is you read in uh, Revelation chapter 16 verse 17. Now this is the last bowl. When this bowl was poured on the air, and as you know, it's, it's poured from heaven. So it's poured on the air, it was going to go around the world, and everyone is going to be uh, trouble. At the same time, in that last bowl, the seventh bowl is poured, that bowl will give some problem to spiritual Babylon, as well as the real Babylon that we will be learning later on but the point I'm making when this seventh bowl is poured on the air now God is going to send the chunk of the ice like an ice cube and the weight will be 100 pound can you imagine most of the time we see the hailstorm or hail comes the largest one people saw the baseball size. I have seen uh, size of a lemon or uh, even the smaller one. But here he says 100 pound chunk will be falling. This is not one. 100 pound keep on falling just like a rain. And so it will be coming on people, houses, buildings, mountains, islands, and everywhere. And so the word of God says when these things are start happening, I don't know how long it will be happening. 
and uh, people will be really, really blaspheming and really, really will be very, very angry at that time. The Word of God says at that particular time, all the islands of the world, the Word of God says every island will fled. Now many people do not want to hear this because islands are very pretty and beautiful places. Most of the American always they go to islands, Bahama Islands or Caribbean Islands or different kinds of islands, Japanese Island, Philippine Islands and there are so many islands in the world and people go to there because it's tropical climate and people enjoy sun and beauty. But the Word of God is saying, when the seventh bowl is poured, those islands, every island, it didn't say one island, every island will be fled. Now when you say fled, we don't know where they're going, but if you search and research and read in different Bibles, it says they will be vanish away or disappear from the earth. It's a sad thing, but the end of the time, the whole world is going to be destroyed. So this is the good news for the people who are listening. They should repent. They should say, our islands are going to go away, so we should be coming to Christ. And once they're coming to Christ, they will have eternal life and a beautiful place in heaven. In heaven there are mountains and rivers and beautiful place. But at the same time, the people like to climb the mountains, and so many people like to live in the mountains, and mountain is, is very good because people like to stay on the mountains. And there are so many small mountains, big mountains, Everest mountains and Ararat mountains and all kinds of mountains in the world. And people are proud in their country if there is a mountain or the river or the island, they are happy. But here the word of God is saying, all the mountains will disappear. I don't know how, because there, is, there will be uh, even earthquake. When the earthquake happens, he said the great city will be divided into three parts. Now most of the people thinking, oh, when you say great city, they are talking about the Jerusalem. They are not talking about Jerusalem. This is poured on the enemy. I said earlier on the Antichrist throne and here is saying the great city was divided into three and the next chapter we will be learning what is that great city. But the point I'm making, all the islands, all the mountains will be gone and the great city will be divided and there will be great earthquake. Maybe earthquake will swallow the mountains and the island. We don't know. But in the end, end time, disaster will come. Heaven and earth will pass away also. So don't get comfort that you are in island and it's a beautiful place and it should not be disappeared. We want to go to the better place. That is called heaven. This earth is not for us. We are living in this earth for temporarily. We are just like a travelers. Our eyes should be on Christ. The word of God says, book of Hebrews chapter 12 verse 2. Say, looking unto Jesus, who is the author and finisher of our faith. Don't put your trust in the mountain. Don't, you, don't put your trust in the islands. Don't put your trust on the beautiful buildings or your bank account or what you have silver and gold. The word of God says in the last days, the silver and gold will be no worth. People will be throwing their silver and gold on the street and nobody will be collecting. So the point I'm making, we have to be ready. The horrible days are coming. The Martyrs already left, they will be going to heaven and then the, the God's wrath will be poured on the enemy, Antichrist, the beast, the false prophet, his followers who took the number and who took the, who worship the 
devil or his image those are the people who will be suffering and so now we will be seeing this is chapter 16 we studied now chapter 17 chapter 18 in these two chapters there is more wrath of God is poured and chapter 19 end of the tribulation Jesus Christ comes in his glory so we have to repair we have to repent and we have to prepare ourselves not to go into this kind of disasters Jesus Christ has given us warning that always pray and ask God to escape from this trouble and we learned earlier church will be escape from this trouble church will not go to the through the tribulation and then we learn about the two witnesses then we learn about all these martyrs will be gone and they will be happy in heaven and so are we ready are you ready for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ in the second coming of Christ there are two parts we will be learning later on but today I want each and every one to call upon Jesus. Say, Lord Jesus, please give me a chance. Please forgive all my sins. Wash me with your precious blood. Touch me, Lord, and heal me and make me your child. If you pray this prayer, your sins are forgiven and you are a child of God. And so let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for the listeners. Give them grace to believe Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior. Bless their families. If there is someone listening to my voice, have sickness and disease, touch them, heal them, deliver them, and set them free. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now the time is almost gone. May God richly bless you and use you more and more for His glory. Amen and Amen. If you want more information, please go to our website or check the number. God bless you now. You've been listening to Jesus is the Answer with Pastor Peter of International Christian Fellowship in Northeast Philadelphia. If this program has been a blessing to you, please let Pastor Peter know. Write to Pastor Peter at Post Office Box 5033, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, 19111. Again, that's Pastor Peter, Box 5033, Philadelphia, PA, 19111. Pastor Peter and his prayer partners are taking your calls right now. The number is 215-342-3759. Again, that's 215-342-3759. You can also send email to icfprayerline at comcast.net. Every Sunday at 11 a.m., International Christian Fellowship has a worship service with communion and healing service. You can find more information at www.internationalchristianfellowship.org. This is a faith ministry. Your prayers and financial support are greatly appreciated. And please remember to tune in next time for Jesus is the Answer.